So welcome everyone to the Grasp Post webinar on the Open Science Assessment Framework. Uh, today we'll be with Clifford and Josephine, who will be presenting uh, the ongoing work on the development of the Open Science Framework in um, the Grasp Post project. Before we start, a few uh, housekeeping rules uh, as usual. So uh, you'll notice the webinar is being recorded. So please take off, uh, keep your camera off if you don't wish to be seen. And um, there will be a dedicated time for questions and answers at the end of the presentations. So please uh, write your questions in the chat. I'll collect them and we'll make sure to address them after um, the presentation today. And finally, uh, you can raise your hand uh, if you wish to speak, and uh, but please make sure to keep your microphone muted uh, the rest of the time to avoid background noises and to ensure a smooth webinar. Uh, and a quick introduction before we start. So this is the first in a series of webinars on the Open Science Assessment Framework. Uh, GRASPOS, so uh, the Open Science Assessment Framework is one of the main outputs of the GRASPOS project, and GRASPOS is a three-year Horizon Europe InfraYosk project, which is focused on creating an open and federated data space for research assessment. And the aim is to provide tools, services, and guidance to support and enable policy reforms uh, for open science-aware, responsible research assessment. And this is at various levels, so including researchers, institutions, organizations, and countries. Now, uh, as I was telling you, the Open Science Assessment Framework, I call, call it the OSAF, is one of the main outcomes of the project. And uh, the aim is to assist research funding and performing organizations in tailoring and implementing new generation open science aware research assessment approaches, uh, which Josephine and Clifford will introduce today. And uh, the materials will be made available after the event in our Zenodo community and uh, on the project website. And I'll share the links uh, to these pages in the chat further on. Quick presentation of our presenters today, Josephine and Clifford, both working in uh, the development of the Open Science Assessment Framework in the GRASPOS project. Josephine is a senior Open Science Specialist at the IT Center for Science in Finland uh, at the Data Management Office. And she's a senior open science and fair data policy and practice specialist in international contexts. She's also leading work on open scholarship and acts as the Finnish partner representative in the collaborative, um, in the collaboration network uh, knowledge exchange. Finally, she's also very keen on finding uh, ways of incentivizing open and fair research, and she provides expertise on a variety of fair matters, including maturity assessments, incentives, and practices. And secondly, um, the second speaker today, Clifford, uh, researcher at the Center for Science and Technology Studies at Leiden University. And he's working in the social studies of science with particular focus on open science in the context of responsible research assessment. Clifford is leading the development of the Open Science Assessment Framework in the GRASPOS project. And he's also co-leading co uh, one of the core working groups towards open infrastructures for responsible research assessment. Finally, Clifford is one of the members of the CWTS Center for Science and Technology Studies focal areas on information and openness and evaluation and culture. Now, without further ado, I will let uh, the presenters uh, start the webinar, and I wish you all uh, a very interesting event. Thank you. Great. Uh, welcome, everybody, and thank you, Lotti, for the introduction. Um, uh, can we advance the next slide, please? So uh, first, I want to just give you um, an idea of what the content of this webinar is. Um, we'll give some additional uh, context to the GRASP OS project. Um, and as we're uh, introducing a new framework, um, we'll look at a couple of related frameworks to help situate where ours fits. Um, then we'll discuss in some detail, but at a high level, 
uh, what the Open Science Assessment Framework is. And this will be followed by um, Josephine, who will introduce a, a use case of an element of the framework. And finally, we will end with a um, mentee facilitated discussion. And uh, I hope um, at the end, we can also just take questions that you might have. Um, okay, so before that, we will get to know uh, some of the contexts from where you are to mentee. So if you want to um, use your QR code or uh, the code itself at the website, you can uh, answer the first question and we will uh, show that. We have 71 participants at the moment. And the code has uh, also been pasted in the chat. Okay, we have a nice impression. Um, a little uh, is the leading. Um, well, uh, it's a race between some and a little. Uh, there's a fair amount of a lot, some not at all, and I don't know. So we advance to the next question. I think there was a, a second, sorry, a second um, minty question. Is it possible to, uh, in the arrows, in the left lower corner to advance to a second question. There we go. Okay, maybe we, we've seen them. Oh. Okay, please, <laughs> uh, next slide, please. Okay, um, a, a bit about grasp OS. Um, Lotte did a good job of um, uh, presenting that, uh, I will add to that uh, that we are 18 partners uh, along three different um, disciplines. So infrastructure ex experts, responsible research assessment, and open science experts, and communities. So we have a, a, a quite an effort focusing on the communities outside of our project uh, to in engage with um, and I will mention among these partners, there are nine pilots who serve a quite important role in conducting assessments, research assessments, uh, using our approach and our resources, um, ultimately, um, but across different national context and disciplinary contexts. So uh, there are co-development partners. Uh, next slide, please. Um, and our 
um, our project is guided by this idea of an open science aware responsible research assessment. And, and that's a recognition among other things that um, um, there are two movements that are uh, kind of intersecting here. And we look at uh, the broad um, idea of responsible research assessment as the context for uh, embedding open science contributions. So on the one hand, assessments need uh, to reward open science practices. Uh, and at the same time, um, from our view, infrastructures used for assessment need to be open. Um, and this it's this bottom part or the second piece that is uh, uh, we see as quite novel uh, contribution. Uh, next slide, please. Thank you. So I think uh, Lotti uh, mentioned most of this, but I will just go through the, the core components of the project. One is the um, Open Science Assessment Framework, which uh, we will be discussing today. The other is um, uh, producing um, assessment data, tools, and services uh, that will be used by the pilots, but uh, uh, as a way to make them available to the public. And this, these resources will um, benefit from this federated open metrics infrastructure. Uh, the GRASP OS pilots are uh, the next I mentioned. And finally, as I mentioned, we uh, spend some time and effort in engaging the community of practice. And uh, joining this community of practice is this core working group on open infrastructure for responsible research assessment. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, on frameworks. Next slide, please. So uh, let's start with a, a definition. Um, this often uh, maybe cause, uh, raises questions. So we'll just uh, be clear that by framework, we mean a basic structure underlying a system concept or text. So uh, in my read, it doesn't imply anything uh, particular about uh, what we're doing or what these other uh, uh, frameworks are doing. It's just, um, that they are structured in a way that this activity can be presented as a, a cohesive whole. So these are the, the um, relevant examples that we will go through uh, somewhat briefly. Next slide, please. So most of you are probably aware of this uh, OSCAM. Uh, this came out in uh, 2017, I believe. Um, and it was the first um, large scale effort to articulate what we mean by con uh, contributions to open science, but uh, more importantly, um, what are the ways in which contributions can be made, uh, really focusing on beyond research output. As you see that uh, we cover research, uh, the OSCAM covers research output, uh, including data sets and software funding. Uh, next slide, please. Um, but it also covers um, a, a much broader view of academia, of, of research. So uh, contributions to peer review, um, teaching, mentoring, and consulting. Um, so many of these are, are not the traditional ways in which people are assessed. Um, the Nor NORCAM, or uh, Norwegian Career Assessment Framework, builds on this idea um, contextualizing it for their uh, values and interests, and also adding in um, tools and databases and other elements of their uh, research community. Uh, next. Uh, and the next framework also builds on the work done before them, the, both of these and other resources, is the OPUS Research Assessment Framework. OPUS is a sister project uh, to GRASP OS. Um, and they've done a nice job in distilling this into uh, a taxonomy of contributions that can be either open or not, but it's uh, uh, divided into research, education, leadership, and valoriz valorization. It's interesting that um, they uh, include with these with this taxonomy, with this uh, framework, um, uh, what they refer to as um, policy interventions. And that is to say, 
um, a policy intervention might be, for example, um, addressed to the uh, director of a, of a uh, institute to ensure that um, if you're going to assess on things like open science, that there is capacity for doing that and that there is a, a appropriate training available. So it, um, uh, this is a resource that we will include in our, our framework uh, for our pilots and, uh, uh, and beyond. Yeah, next one, please. Um, this indicator frameworks uh, report also came out from the uh, an expert panel uh, um, of, uh, from the uh, European Commission. And um, I'm, I'm putting it here because it pays a lot of attention to um, context, to the context of the evaluation and how it informs what sorts of, in this case, what sorts of indicators you might select uh, based on the context. Um, thanks, next, please. So <clears throat> um, this is the INORM scope framework. And um, we've actually adopted this for use uh, for the pilots and in our framework as well. But it's a high level uh, framework uh, addressing responsible research assessment. It's high level so that it can be used uh, across different um, contexts and different levels of ag aggregation. And it basically has five steps. Start with what you value so that you can then assess or measure what you value. Um, take uh, seriously the contextual considerations, which also determines uh, in part what sort of uh, assessment approach you will take. Uh, then once you have those to uh, look through the options for evaluating and, and determine whether uh, evaluation is the right uh, tool for what you're aiming to do. Once you select a, an approach, uh, an option um, uh, to probe deeply on the possibility of introducing uh, unintended consequences, uh, things that may uh, privilege some groups and uh, exclude others, for example. Want to uh, be aware of that. And then finally, to evaluate your evaluation. Uh, next slide, please. And the next. So we'll now uh, start with uh, our framework. Our framework is, is um, guided by a number of principles, primarily through the COORA uh, Coalition for Advancing Research Assessment uh, in Europe. Um, but the, uh, the OSIF itself, the framework itself, um, we believe has um, uh, is situated to uh, facilitate uh, some key uh, commitments of the COORA agreement. And first is the diversity of contributions. So including um, a vast range of, of, of contributions beyond um, material outputs um, is, is a, quite a challenge. And um, we're trying to take that challenge uh, in this framework, address it. And uh, also this is the, the idea that primarily um, qualitative evaluation, but uh, supported by quantitative indicators. And these two things um, are related. So we think we can make some uh, headway on these. And uh, also looking at the scope principles, one uh, that we think uh, uh, that we can address, which is to evaluate with the evaluated. And this means to include those who are being evaluated, um, it means to us, uh, at, at, through the full process. So in the beginning of designing the assessment and deciding on uh, what counts as evidence. Um, thank you. So the, the Open Science Assessment Framework has three components, a method, um, an assessment portfolio, and an assessment registry. The method here we call scope plus I. Scope, uh, the plus I means infrastructure. So we introduce assessment specific infrastructure into uh, the process. And that includes, uh, that's operationalized as a number of um, resources like templates, guidelines, uh, checklists to help uh, evaluators work their way through um, designing their assessment. And it's focused on responsible research assessment in general and open science in particular. Uh, the assessment portfolio is a, uh, let me just go through these three, then I'll jump to the next. Um, it, it is um, uh, a, a digital 
portfolio to capture um, all the information about a, an assessment event, not only the narrative and evidence, um, but also uh, the outputs from the scope process where you have all the, the um, information that shapes the assessment. Um, diversity uh, will enable, including the diversity of inputs and roles at different levels of aggregation, researcher group and institution, for example, and it's positioned as a collaborative resource. So to um, be open to those who are being evaluated as well as the uh, assessment team. And then finally, a, an assessment registry uh, to publish a, an assessment protocol once you're complete. Next slide. Next slide, please. Um, so we have a lot going on in this uh, framework. So I want to um, break it down by um, connecting the things uh, on the basis of assessment event phases. So we have four phases, the readiness phase, the design phase, I'm going down the left column and uh, performing the assessment and then uh, as evaluating the assessment. So uh, back up to assessment readiness. This correlates with the first two steps of the scope process. Start with what you value and context and purpose. Um, from the method um, column, we uh, provide a number of templates and guidelines to facilitate this process. And we already, on the right-hand column, um, instantiate an, an assessment portfolio and begin collecting this information so that the portfolio travels uh, with this process uh, through each phase. In assessment design, which is uh, for scope, options for evaluation and probing deeply. Again, templates, um, guidelines, and checklists that are relevant for this phase. Um, and then beginning to populate the assessment portfolio, which uh, we, as, again, position as multi-actor object, um, and uh, populate it with uh, the evidence and narratives uh, appropriate uh, for the, uh, the approach and to also publish the protocol, resulting protocol. Next is to perform the assessment. Um, here, the assessment portfolio uh, serves as a way to distribute all the same information and, and content to the uh, all stakeholders involved with the assessment. And then finally, to evaluate the evaluation at the conclusion of the event, um, and then to publish the protocol, not the people evaluated or the evidence used, but uh, basically to provide a transparent record of um, what the values, uh, context, and purpose were, and what sort of approach was then uh, enacted. And then to be a, um, a resource for others. So um, with all that in mind, uh, um, we still are uh, quite um, conscious of the fact that um, context, um, purpose and values inform assessments and that each context is different. So the flexibility is still um, a part of this uh, approach. Uh, one more slide. Next slide, please. Um, in the next slide, uh, mine's not turning by the way. I think it crashed out. Um, I'll keep talking while... Um... Yes, I think, yes, it's crossed out for some reason. Um, the, the last slide, I'll just start talking about it, um, is uh, to provide a bit more detail on the uh, assessment portfolio, um, specifically the, the openness profile, uh, which is what uh, Josephine will present in a moment. But basically, uh, the assessment Portfolio will have um, a specification and then um, multiple templates to address different levels of aggregation from individual researcher to um, institute to institution or community. And we will experiment with the country level uh, portfolio. 
but in the individual level, there's the individual um, assessment portfolio for hiring tenure or um, um, annual review, for example. Um, um, but the openness profile is different. It's also for individuals. It's more of an ongoing account of one's um, contributions to open science. So I wanted to give you that background um, to set up uh, Josephine's presentation. Uh, I'll mention that, um, okay, now it's, you could, there it is. Yeah, next one, please. This one, that's the one I've been talking about. Um, I, I, the final thing I'll say is um, if you're interested, uh, RAID, the RAID um, identifier, uh, research activity identifier is uh, uh, the underpinning infrastructure for this portfolio. And the um, if you want more information, the, it's linked to this slide. And so I will pass it on to Josephine. Great, Next thank slide. you very much. Yes, so I'm here to tell you about the uh, openness profile that Clifford already briefly mentioned and the especially the pilot ambitions of the Finnish research.fi ser service when it comes to this openness profile. Um, one more, please. Thank you. So what is it all about? Uh, so an openness profile uh, is a digital resource in the form of a personal profile, which lists activities and outputs related to open science. And it's located and accessible in one single place, making it really easy for the end user. Uh, the concept of the openness profile was originally created and worked quite extensively on during a few years time in the collaboration network called Knowledge Exchange. And we are in this RASP OS project furthering on, on that work. So two reports were published on this topic in the Knowledge Exchange, uh, the first of which defines the basic concepts and the second outlines the reference model and goes a bit further into the requirements of an openness profile. And I've included the links to the reports in, in uh, towards the end of my presentation in case you want to read some more. And when it comes to the technical side of the openness profile, um, as Clifford mentioned about the, the RAID service, the research activity identifier. So it, it's covered through that, which is a PID system. Uh, and it is uh, currently being fur further developed by the Fair Core for EOSC project. And the aim is to, to add a responsible research assessment, enabling extension to the RAID. Uh, and this way, to be able to uh, satisfy the requirements of the openness profile. Uh, there is another, uh, another PID system that will be leveraged for this work, the ORCID, uh, which enables the automated processes involved. And in the GRASP OS project, we rely heavily on the work done in the nine pilots that Clifford also mentioned. And these are consisting of national research performing organization and thematic level pilots. And these uh, nine pilots will feed very valuable information into the work in, in terms of the requirements and wishes for the openness profile. Next slide, please. So uh, some of the basic requirements for an openness profile and why uh, we think it's a good idea to have one in place. So the, the main idea is that it is to reduce the administrative burden and that it will um, allow for um, both metrics-based inputs as well as narratives. So this is really important as um, all things related to open science are not necessarily measurable, but um, should still be able to consider uh, be considered as significant contributions to uh, research. So it allows recognition for various different types of research outputs. Uh, it is also uh, important to assure provenance um, in all aspects as well, um, which in, in turn fosters trust. So there needs to be a balance in place between uh, the automated processes, obviously, and manual checks. So we cannot automate everything and, and just have it um, fixed through that. Uh, there is also an urgent need to involve the communities in the work to reach uh, consensus when it comes to, for example, working on taxonomies, uh, workflows, and standards. Um, uh, PID-based automated workflows are also important, which allow linking between the research objects, such as 
between the people, between organizations and outputs, etc. And lastly, using APIs makes it possible to retrieve information for uh, creation of, for example, knowledge graphs. Uh, next slide, please. So uh, the uh, mock-up would probably look something like this uh, through its integration in, into ORCID, where you can see on the, the right-hand side, in short, the types of input you could include in the profile, uh, ranging from ORCID records that contain uh, structured formats uh, equipped with a PID uh, to manual entries in the form of text. Uh, for example, blog posts could be one uh, output of such type um, that might not necessarily have a PID equipped with it. Um, other types of inputs are mentioned in the OSCAM that you also heard Clifford uh, present just now. And to the next slide, yeah, so here you can see um, uh, some more concrete examples of the type of outputs and activities that could uh, populate an openness profile. Um, so this is just um, if you would like to familiarize yourselves with these outputs um, later on. I'm not going to go uh, any deeper into these right now, but on to the next slide, please. So this is what the uh, research.fi um, looks like. Um, it's a research information hub. Um, so this is the where the use case part comes into play in this presentation. You can also consider this um, service as Finland's national quiz system um, that compiles information on Finnish research uh, from institutional, national and international sources. And its main purpose is to provide an overall picture and a comprehensive information base of the research that are produced in Finland. Um, however, one of the functions of the researcher profiles in, in research.fi is to um, enable transfer of information to research funders or organizations. This is all based on the researcher's um, permission. So nothing is being uh, transferred without the researcher um, having uh, their um, say on it, which um, and this is um, enabling uh, using the information for evaluation purposes, but this is only in, in such cases. So uh, in terms of national monitoring of open science and research, the research um, acts as a platform for presenting the results. Uh, the monitoring uh, indicators are used to determine organizations' openness profiles and their sort of levels of open science and research. Uh, and on to the next slide. So about the researcher profile shortly, um, it's a public profile where researchers can populate information from ORCID and from their home organization. The re researcher can choose um, uh, what he or she wants to publish, as I said, so it's completely uh, based on a, yeah, it's a voluntary basis. So the content of the profile can in, uh, include, for example, uh, the name of the person, of the contributor, the description of research subjects, keywords, affiliations and titles, education and degrees, um, other research activities and merits, um, for example, memberships and rewards. Um, it can obviously also include publications, research data, Etc. So it can include quite a large variety of um, researcher related information. Uh, next slide, please. So about the uh, pilot ambitions of research.fi. So um, the researcher profile would uh, list the open science activities as a separate section. Uh, and it would allow a few, um, uh, it would allow more diversified inclusion of open science elements and activities as it um, is now. There will also be a test bed for this where researchers can test themselves this functionality on a voluntary basis. And there is also a plan to collect further feedback in terms of usefulness and user friendliness of the openness profile through interviews and in the survey. Um, and lastly, there it is very important to point out that everything that goes into the researcher profile is totally up to the researcher 
him or herself, I mentioned this already, but just to stress this, that um, it is not mandatory to populate this uh, profile at all. Uh, this is based on the My Data principles, which is a new approach in, in personal data management and processing that seeks to um, shy away from an organizational centric system uh, towards a more human centric system and where the personal data uh, is considered to be in the hands of the individual who can decide on access and stay in control of, um, of this data. Uh, next slide, please. So this is another mock-up of the researcher profile that might give you an indication of uh, what it looks like and where the open science activities would be positioned. So next slide, please. And it is always good to also um, bring from the sort of the um, considerations and maybe some limitations involved. So uh, it's good to note that uh, research.fi is not an evaluation tool. And it's um, for that reason also not designed to support evaluations. Rather, it is um, purpose to collect and disseminate information on various research activities. And so the openness profile would uh, not either be used for evaluation purposes. It would be merely um, put into place to showcase openness. Uh, there is still some uh, dispute around the meaning of openness. And this is also something that should be clearly defined in the project and agreed upon among all partners involved. And this is especially especially important in, in the context where openness is to be considered um, merit. Um, and talking about merits, it's also good to note that uh, openness cannot in, in all cases be considered as a merit um, because there are always um, exceptions to the rule uh, as the scientific landscape in itself is very diverse. For example, when it comes to sensitive data, there are not equal opportunities to openly share all the data. So we have to be quite careful if we start measuring openness. Um, we also need to make sure that we only include the indicators that are realistic across disciplines. Um, only then can we start to include open science achievements as metrics to be evaluated. And as a last consideration, we need to find a reliable way of bringing from the open science activities that are not currently uh, very visible. For example, team science effort, efforts. Um, next slide, please. So on to the added value to research.fi. Um, all things related to advancing research support and policies in any way is best done on the international arena. I think we can all agree on that uh, together with like-minded colleagues, like-minded organizations. So this is especially important for um, smaller countries such as Finland. Um, the GRASP OS project also emphasizes convergence when it comes to defining best practices within open science uh, more concre concretely by developing tools and services to merit researchers and organizations on, on their open science activities. Uh, this project also supports the implementation of the core commitments of the agreement of, um, on reforming research assessment, which is on the agenda of most of the um, higher education institutions in Finland. Um, next slide, please, and I believe this is the last one with <laughs> including only the slides to the uh, knowledge exchange reports on the openness profile I mentioned earlier. That was all for me. Thank you very much. And I think we have a Mentimeter next. So you probably noticed that the there is a different code for this part of the Mentimeter. It's 
So how would you describe responsible research assessment using only one word? This could also be interested, uh, interesting in, uh, in our word cloud setting. We can also probably facilitate that. Um, but this is interesting to see very different types of input coming in. Yeah, complicated, difficult, but also uh, necessary and important. I see coming across quite many times. Someone thinks it's a little bit fuzzy as well. <laughs> and if you want to open up what you had in mind when typing in uh, anything into the Mentimeter, just um, raise your hand and we let you speak. So the next question is, um, please put the following on a scale from one to five, ranging from no interest to being highly interested, interesting. Um, you want to pick your minds on a few topics here related to uh, the uh, OSA. So there is almost a tie between the with the scope uh, plus one method be useful at your organization and would assessment portfolios be of interest. So there seems to be an appetite and interest for the both of them. Okay, so the next question, how are open science efforts valued and encouraged at your organization. So here are a few um, options to choose from, but also the category other if it doesn't quite fit into the, um, your situation. So most of you say that it's um, encouraged and valued and it's done through good 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 guidelines so that's that's good to hear uh, that these are available Here, I would encourage you to, to write um, into the chat, if you wouldn't mind, if you would like to provide longer input or also speak up, because it would be interesting to hear, um, hear more about this topic. Yeah, I wonder if we can also take questions or comments while we're doing this. Yeah. So uh, yeah, both either in the chat or um, raise your hand. Um, I see quite many different inputs coming in. So um, in terms of uh, how open science is being assessed at your organization. So one says that it follows the Quora recommendations. Um, open publications is encouraged uh, and assessed. Uh, A national strategy and Quora commitments uh, and uh, transparency and reproducibility. It would be interesting to hear um, 
how this is concretely done at your uh, organization. Could you go a bit further down? Oh, <laughs> there are more uh, inputs there, but I don't know if you can go back. Yes. Can you scroll down so that we can see the rest of the, the comments there? Yeah, thank you. So some say that they have a plan in place to work uh, to include various aspects in their new assessment framework, uh, and that there are discipline independent assessments taking place uh, according to established recommendations. Okay. I think this was the last question we had in the Mentimeter this time, right? Yeah. But now we are opening the floor for more questions. Um, if you have any, any for me or Clifford or for anyone in, in this room, really. Everything was really clear, I guess. <laughs> Hi, Josephine and Clifford. Thank you very much. There are still no questions in the chat. Um, I think it, everything was very clear. Very nice presentation. If we have no questions, I can ask for a few minutes of your time and share the feedback form with you in the chat if you agree. And we can see if any questions arise in the next minutes. So, okay, there is a question in the chat. Do you think to add software or other research products in your evaluation? From Julia. Uh, oh, yeah. So, hi, Julia. Uh, so, do we think about adding software as a research uh, product? Yes. Um, outputs uh, will be included. I guess there are some challenges to, um, as we know from one of our pilots, there are some challenges to uh, evaluating contributions to um, software. Um, one is that um, it's uh, not so easily tracked as often say in a in a github repository um, the other is um, uh, which i find also quite uh, compelling is um, there are versions of software so often you would need to um, be able to specify which version and i think our um, uh, laurent uh, in his uh, computer science um, pilots are looking at ways of collecting that in an automated way, but uh, it's not always structured in, in terms of what the contribution was and which version. But uh, yeah, uh, it's a good question. Thank you. Thank you, Clifford. Do we have any other questions? I see in the chat that Kumar, who is working with uh, Laurent, uh, wrote, we are working with Laurent on identifying softwares in publication as well. So for information, Kumar and Laurent are working on the pilots linked to this activity. And yes, Kumar, another, thank you. Another question from the chat from Ivan. Is GrassPoS focusing only on researcher academic career assessment or includes other aspects of research assessment, such as projects, teams, institutions as well? Um, yeah, uh, another good question. We're trying to cover uh, the full range in terms of um, individual researchers to groups, um, faculties, institutes, uh, for example. Um, 
And across our pilots, I think we cover um, quite a range. Uh, there are pilots that are looking at individual searchers uh, along with their pilot, um, but they are usually in a, a, a higher level of aggregation uh, a department. Um, um, a couple of national um, pilots, that, so a national level funder. And um, we have two that are, three that are community-based or thematic. Uh, it's hard to sort of classify them. But uh, for example, the computer science um, community is, is one of them. Um, and then uh, humanities and social sciences is also another. Thank you, Clifford. Uh, next, I have a comment from Fortis, who says that the scope method is meant also to provide the context, which I believe is a comment, not a question. Yeah, yeah, just as a comment that uh, I think Grasp is, uh, in as a project, it will give you the opportunity and the infrastructure to assess different contexts. Of course, the scope method, I think, can each organization, each team, each department can define what needs to be evaluated. And I think that's the conversation that we're having, that we are not defining what needs to be assessed. I think we're trying to cover as many research outputs and practices as possible. But in the end, uh, it's down to the individual institution and organization, I think, to to work with our material and OSA, for example, to set up their own research assessment exercise, let's say, uh, unless I'm not uh, clarifying it correctly, Clifford, if you want to, to add on what I said. Um, yeah, I would only add that, uh, um, that uh, addressing context and incorporating it uh, into the assessment uh, decisions is, is uh, seems to uh, be a fairly complex uh, exercise, the latter part. Um, but uh, that is a, one of the resources we will uh, develop, which is a uh, template for uh, accounting for contextual factors. Thank you, Fortis and Clifford. And. Uh... Next up is an announcement for the next community of practice uh, meeting of the Graspers project, which will be on assessing open science in the context of computer science. So it will be on the computer science pilot. And the link is in the chat. So if you have not yet joined the mailing list, you can do so here. And another question, I'm moving on directly because it wasn't a question. Next question is from Ivan. Uh, who was asking are and how grassbus activities connected with Kuara working groups? Uh, maybe Clifford, you want to talk a bit more about the Kuara working group you are co-leading? Uh, yes. Um, so two of us are from grassbus are co-co-leading uh, the Open Infrastructure for Responsible Research assessment working group. So we're directly connected to that. It's directly related to what we're doing. Um, so we see some synergies there. Um, be, uh, beyond that, um, we're paying attention to the others. Uh, it's a quite a nice um, initiative to um, have so many working groups focused on research assessment. Um, yeah, so it's mainly uh, the one that uh, we're working directly in, um, but um, uh, they're all, I think, quite relevant. For example, some of them are focused on specifically on uh, early careers. Um, and um, yeah, I, I think that answers your question. If not, uh, please uh, let me know. Thank you, Clifford. I've added the link in the chat to a blog post on the OI4RA working group. If Thank you. Is interested in reading a bit more about the the plans. Okay. I don't see any other questions in the chat. Just wait a second in case. But it seems like we finished the, the questions. So I'll put back the link to the feedback form at the bottom of the chat. 
please take the time to provide your input. It helps us uh, make the next webinars even better. So I'd like to thank Josephine and Clifford for the webinar and also Zainab who contributed and Zainia who is uh, hosting on the technical part. So thank you everyone. And we'll share with you the links uh, when the materials are available. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.